Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have e in it, i in it, so it's complex somewhat. Can x be real? No, it can't be. It's not possible, right? If x is real, then you're not going to get i at the end. Anyways, so x is not real. Let's go ahead and solve this problem by turning i into a polar form. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, i can be written as 0 plus 1i. And as you should know, if you have any complex number, z equals a plus bi. This can be graphed on the coordinate plane where a is the x-coordinate and b is the y-coordinate. So you can kind of graph it and find the ra uh, radius or the modulus, the distance from 0, and then express it in Euler form. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and uh, notice that a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. So on the complex plane, basically, we're looking at the point 0, 1. And 0, 1 is just going to be on the y-axis. So that's our number, which is one unit away on the y-axis, which we call imaginary axis, by the way, um, by one unit. So the angle that this number makes with the positive x-axis would be pi over 2. So that's going to be our argument. And we're going to use it to write this in polar and Euler form. Uh, first of all, let's just um, mention that any number z can be written as r times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, where alpha is the angle and r is the modulus or the absolute value of our number z. In this case, uh, since our number is one unit away from zero, its modulus is one, so we don't have to write it, and the alpha is going to be pi over two in our case. So our number is, is going to be actually fairly simple. Z can be written as, or I should say, I can be written as one times cosine pi over two plus I sine pi over two. But the Euler's formula is actually real helpful because it tells us, hey, you can write this number as e to the power i times alpha. So it's a really nice shortcut, and this kind of comes from series expansions of e to the x and cosine x and sine x. If you go ahead and um, expand e to the power i x, you're going to notice that it's made up of two pieces like cosine x and i sine x. Okay, so it's a beautiful formula, and we can basically write this as r is 1, so it's going to be e to the power i times pi over 2. Some people are going to write it e to the power pi over 2i, doesn't matter, same thing. So, where do we go from here? We, and another thing that we need to mention is just, this is just going to be the principal branch, because there are obviously infinitely many angles for which this is true. Pi over 2, you can just add multiples of 2 pi to it or 2 n pi to it, that way you're going to get infinitely many solutions where n is a non-negative integer. Okay? So you can go ahead and write it in the general form or just look at the principal branch. doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer uh, using the principal branch. But if you wanted to uh, look at the general solution, then you can always replace pi over 2 with pi over 2 plus 2 n pi, you know, and then you'll get the answer in general form. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the following. Then our x number was expressed with the Euler's formula, i, So and we knew that eight e to the power x squared is equal to i, but now i can be expressed as e to the power pi over 2 times i. Great, so now we get this nice equation where the exponents are supposed to be equal, and from here we're going to get the following, x squared equals pi over 2i. And you just take the square root, that's it, right? But i is a complex number, it's not real, therefore it has two complex roots. So we have to consider both. But if you just took the square root, it should look like this. x is going to be the square root of pi over 2i. And pi over 2 is just going to be the coefficient of i. In case of the general solution, it's just going to look like this, pi over 2 plus 2 and pi, and that is multiplied by i, and then you take the square root. Pretty similar, uh, you can always add it if you want. But I'm just going to keep it simple now. So that's our x, but remember, with complex numbers, there are two roots, so when I write it like this, I'm actually I'm talking about two different solutions. 
So pi over 2 is a real number, and square root of pi over 2 is just that. So we have to worry about writing this as the square root of i, right? So how do you find square root of i? For that, we do need to be able to express i as a complex number is in polar form again. But we already did that. So i was e to the power i pi over 2. Now I want to find the square root of i, and there's two of them. So let's say, suppose one of them is called, I don't know, w0, and that is going to be uh, this number, e to the power i pi over 2, half of that, that's going to be e to the power i pi over 4. But I also need to consider this, i pi over 2 plus 2 and pi, and when you divide it by 2, you're going to get i pi over 4 plus n pi. In other words, if you're finding this complex square roots, you have to add pi to the first solution. So pi over 4, let's call that w sub 1, is going to be i times 5 pi over 4. This doesn't look very good, but if you want, we could probably flip it around and write it as pi over 4 pi, four, pi over 4 i, and the second one as 5 pi over 4 i. And notice something about this. Uh, when you expand it with the cosine and sine, 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. So these are my quadrants. Pi over 4 is here. 5 pi over 4 is that plus pi. So it's in the third. Therefore, both the cosine and the sine values are going to be negated. And that kind of makes sense because if you think about the square roots, one of them must be the opposite of the other because when you square, you get the same number, right? Exactly. Cool, cool. So in this case, w0 squared equals i. Make sense? And both of uh, this is true for both of the solutions. Cool, cool. So we kind of got the idea, w0 or whatever that is, but let's go ahead and turn it into an a plus bi form. So what is w0? It is e to the power pi over 4i, and then I can write it as cosine. By the way, this... Um, since the modulus was 1 for i, its square roots are also going to have the same modulus, the square root of 1, which is 1. So we can write it as cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. And now we can go and replace cosine pi over 4 with square root of 2 over 2. And then, again, sine is going to be the same, and we get uh, our solution. So this is going to be w0, right? But this is just the square root of i. Remember that. So for our x value, we have to multiply it by square root of pi over 2. So from here, first x value, let's call it x sub 0. It's just going to be the square root of pi over 2 times square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2i. If you really want to do uh, go crazy and just multiply these out, and you'll get the answer in a plus bi form, or just leave it like this, because this is the modulus. That makes sense, right? And by the same token, x sub 1 is just going to be the square root of pi over 2 multiplied by negative square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2i. So basically, x you can express as with the plus minus sign pi square root of pi over 2 multiplied by root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. That way, you're not writing the negative inside the parentheses. You kind of keep it outside. Now, what would happen if I was going with the general solution? I would just replace pi over 2 with pi over 2 plus 2 and pi, and then that would just give me basically general solutions. And you can replace n with 0, you get this one. You can replace n with 1, you get another solution. Obviously, the square roots are going to vary, right? They're not going to be the same for different values of um, the addition that comes from 2 and pi. Anyways. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and I mean, I'll see you next time with another video. I keep saying tomorrow in an hour. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.